guys, it's the Swing Man here, back with another upload with Eric Flynn. We're going to have a little bit of a bucket breakdown, what we're going to call it today. And uh, basically what we're going to discuss is pitch selection. Yeah. So I think this is an area that a lot of people don't discuss, a lot of hitting coaches you know, don't discuss enough of, because if you think about all of our mechanics, we put in a lot of work towards our swing, but at the end of the day, all that matters is getting a good pitch and barreling it up. Yeah, that was one thing my college coach always preached, um, saying bad pitches make bad hitters. So you swing at bad pitches, uh, pitches that you can't have um, a positive swing on. It's just going to put break down everything that you work on. So um, pitch selection is is key. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, um, and this is a lot of uh, questions I have in the comments and stuff over time. It's just, you know, how do we pick the right pitch? Like, what is it that I need to be looking for? And it starts with understanding yourself as a hitter. You know, we put a lot of time into our mechanics and stuff, but when we're taking batting practice, when we're, you know, hitting in games, what is it that we feel like we hit the best? You know, is it that low and, you know, middle away, something down in the zone, or do we like the ball belt high, middle in? You know, like we do. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so understanding that point, and then once we get to that point, uh, it's about zoning in on that pitch. So when, you're, when you have your at bat, um, you know, outside of two strikes, what is it, like, what are you trying to look for? Like, is there, um, I guess starting with your favorite pitch and then also, you know, as far as release points, like what is it that you're trying to look for? Um, for me personally, um, like especially my hitting style, I usually drive the ball up the middle. That's where I get most of my power. That's where I feel, feel most comfortable. So I'm looking for something all over the middle third of the plate, something that I can do damage with all over the middle of the plate. Um, if I'm feeling really good and, and I know I can pull the ball, that's when I'll start um, start looking in a little bit more, but um, but my key my key is I'm going to look for something on the middle of the third of the plate, and I'm looking for something hard, um, usually down in the zone because I know I can have success driving that driving that. Plate. Yeah, no, absolutely. And, um, as far as as far as my approach goes, you know, I like to look for something over the heart of the plate. Kind of same idea. Yeah. Once we start getting locked in, you start moving that that zone a little in and you run and have some fun uh, seeing that ball fly to our pull side. Um, but I think one other thing that kind of ties into it is understanding who's on the mound. Mm -hmm. So I guess for me, when it comes to having good pitch selection, I can't do that unless I understand what that pitcher's throwing, how his delivery is, if he's quick from the stretch, like that's a big deal. Um, all those little things and doing your homework is is the way it's, it's almost like um, I, I can't have a proper pitch selection if I don't know exactly what that guy has yeah you know and that's where I'm if I'm hitting cleanup from the very first hitter I have my helmet on and I'm watching every pitch I could I could yeah. say what pitch where it was for every single batter three batters ahead yeah um, to help me is that kind of what you yeah and that's that's something I try to take into account even like when the pitchers warming up. Um, so a lot of times when you're playing, like if you're playing in tournaments, or if you're even if you're playing like maybe you're in high school, you're playing high school ball, you maybe see a guy once a year, a pitcher once a year. So you don't really know how he's trying to set you up, how he's trying to get you out. But you can see his stuff. You can see where he's where he's uh, locating his fastball. Is he can he locate his fastball on the uh, inner half of the plate to a right hand hitter? Or is he throwing? Is he setting up the catcher setting up away the whole game? And that's the only place he can spot up his fastball. So, so little things, especially um, on the lower levels, like when you're in high school and you're playing AAU ball, you can see pitchers get into tendencies, and you can kind of figure them out a little bit and say, hey, he can only spot up his fastball away. If he throws a fastball in on the inner half of the plate, he's going to miss. He can't throw a fastball. He's scared to throw the fastball in. So just understanding that and, and saying, hey, I did my homework before my bat, so now I know what pitches I can have success on. So I, I know something middle away. I know I can I can eye up something middle away and I can drive something hard right center gap and I know I can get a double. Yeah, absolutely. And that's and I think like going back to understanding your pitcher, one of the stories that I reflect to all the time as far as pitch selection is when I was in college summer league, now if you guys haven't watched my college story I do recommend it. But I didn't have much 
hitting instruction. Neither of us did uh, through our college career. It wasn't until my uh, my last year of collegiate summer league ball, uh, I had a, a third base coach that came up to me. He called me to the side. I was already 0 for 9 off the same guy um, for like three straight games that we faced him. And he got me out my first at bat. So, and he had a good changeup, very good changeup. He threw 90. So, but that's what he kept giving me. And for me, I never really understood what it was to have good pitch selection. I would just, un I would just know he threw it and then hope for the best. <laughs> so, um, so please don't throw it. Yeah, yeah, that's kind of what I was at. So. Uh, he pulled me to the side and he goes, you know, what What are you looking for right here? I'm like, well, I'd like a fastball. He's like, what is he going to throw you? I was like, he's going to throw me a changeup. And I, he's like, well, sit on a changeup. And like that part, like, I'm like, sit on a changeup? Like, I never sat dead red on a changeup. But he's like, look for a changeup. Like, he's going to throw it. He liked throwing it away. So I sat dead red, changeup away off of a guy who threw 90 miles an hour. And sure enough, here comes his little 78 mile an hour change up, middle away, thigh high, and I drilled a triple off the top of the wall to left center field. And like right there, that was like, holy cow. Like, I had no strikes on me. I had all the freedom to pick whatever yeah. pitch I wanted to look for yeah. and then hit it. And then now, like now, you know, obviously that was years ago, mm -hmm. but you look at major league hitters, you see a guy take a ball right down the middle. Like, what is he looking yeah. for? But they have approaches. Like, they're, they're looking for specific stuff. Yeah, and, under, and committing to it and going 100%. Because I know, I don't know if you said it there, but um, off camera you were talking. Like, sometimes you'd be in between that changeup and fastball. Mm -hmm. And you can never be in between pitches. No. So, you can say either I'm committing 100% to the fastball or I'm committing 100% to the changeup. And understand, early in the count, before I have two strikes... I need to sell out on whatever pitch I'm trying to swing at. Mm -hmm. So, um, so that's a, that's a huge thing. I feel like it happened to me a lot. Like I'm like, oh, this guy has a has a big slider, but he has a good fastball. So, <laughs> <laughs> what am I gonna do? Yeah, yeah. Hopefully, he doesn't throw the slider and I can follow the fastball. Yeah. But it, you gotta commit. Either way, you gotta commit, or you're you're out. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And that's where you know, as I carry that in my professional career, one of the the best pitchers I faced was Giordano Ventura. And, you know, you know RIP, you know, I, I wish he was still here because I you know, would love to see what yeah. he was able to do. But Stuff. he was, you know, he was consistent 100 miles an hour. But in the minor leagues, he had that speed. He had nasty off-speed stuff, but no control over his off-speed. <laughs> like, he could hit his fastball in, in and out. So I knew I would look for that 100-mile-an-hour fastball. And, like, as a professional hitter, I see 90, 95 every day. 100, yeah, it comes at you fast, but if you're sitting dead red on it, you could yeah. hit it. And I, I hit him well because I knew I didn't have to worry about off-speed pitches. Yeah. And that's about having good pitch selection. I would Obviously, I can't sit the whole plate 100 miles an hour. I'll either turn on it or go the <laughs> other way. I was sitting away because I was comfortable driving the ball to left field as a left-handed hitter um, off of him. But... Uh, when it comes to our, our pitch selection, I always tell people it's important to understand there's a difference between not having two strikes and having two strikes. And I think we're both believers in, you know, anything outside of two strikes a hit a count. Yeah, yeah. That's pretty much where we're at. Definitely, definitely. So, um, and, and one thing that one of, one of the guys I play pro ball with, any ball with, um, he always told me, when you're in a hitter's count, you can't be late. Like, you can't. Like, don't be late. So he said, like, as a right-handed hitter, either you're pulling it into the uh, <laughs> yeah, into the crowd, right. either you're pulling it into the crowd, or you're driving it. You're driving it. So, and that comes to that approach of not, of not, uh, not being 100. Mm -hmm. The only way, only way you can get there, only way you can drive a pitch, you can pull it foul, is being 100 percent committed. Yep. So, it's oh yeah. Prolonged. Yeah, absolutely. And I see guys all the time like, oh, I was, I was sitting on that fastball. I was like, well, you weren't ready. For <laughs> you that weren't fastball. Yeah. yeah. There's a rhythm to it. You know, I'd rather be early than late. Send a message. You know, uh, get that barrel out there. Absolutely. But uh, but I guess tying that into our drills that we like to do. Um, now, Eric and I, we we hit together since college or high school. Yeah. Uh, travel ball. We started training together in college and professionally. And there's a few drills that we love to do. Um, the first one that I like to do was the seven ball drill. Uh, so we do front toss and basically, and I do have this video uh, on my YouTube page. If you look up uh, pitch selection, I did shoot one with the seven ball drill on there. But essentially we just line it up diagonally 
uh, seven balls. Ball number four will be in the middle. You keep ball seven and one on the corners, and uh, you just track them. So you have a buddy front toss to you, and then you just track them in. You try to call out the number as it's coming out of his hand and try to get earlier and earlier and earlier, and then have your, your partner tell you if you're one ball off or that was correct, or hey, that wasn't even the right side of the plate type deal. So um, that was like one of my favorite ones, and I know you're mentioning the two old clock stuff. Yeah, yeah, but even before even before we go to that, like just understanding what that drill is doing for you, it's just training your training your eyes. Yeah. To like to like really understand and with the repetition, getting the reps in, and your eye gets better at picking up that pitch early and saying, yeah, this is my pitch and I can let it go. Because mm -hmm. sometimes, and especially like when you have breakdowns in your swing, you'll be looking at a pitch that you think is um, it's right over the middle of the plate, but it's actually a ball. And it's just because of the breakdown in your swing, and that's something you can you can take back and say, hey, I need to make an adjustment. Why why am I not recognizing this pitch? Why yeah. is this pitch looking like one thing when it's really something else? Oh, yeah. And then to, just to go along with along with uh, recognizing what pitch it is so you can do uh, damage with that pitch. Yeah, and then also what we would do also, we would start adding swings into it, but we would only do, so one would be your inside, seven's outside, so we would do two, three, and four. So we're looking for that middle end, you know, that thigh high middle end, two, three, four, and we only swing at those pitches. Yeah. So you let the other ones go because it's about maximizing damage, and we're very successful hitters when we stick with our plan yep. and we attack the pitches that we're looking for. Once we go outside of that, we're just helping the pitcher at yep. that point. So a pitcher's whole goal is to keep you off balance. Um, you have this this little guy right here, you know, this sweet spot right here is what you're trying to hit. So if you're looking for a zone that's the same size as that sweet spot, you're gonna have you know more success than trying to cover an entire 17 inch plate um, in that sense. So yeah, so the seven ball drill definitely helped us um, develop better uh, recognition of our zones. Uh, so that one, again, I'll, I'll put a link below so you can check out that video. And then going back, our 2-0 count. So it was a, it was, this was a fun thing we used to do as well. Yeah, yeah, 2-0, what we would do is we would take five or six swings and we would pretend each swing is a 2-0 count. And so we wanted to have like higher positive contact. Yep. So we tried to go five for five or six for six and we just have a competition between one another and just saying who can have a better round. And the one big thing too is you don't wanna, you don't have to swing at every pitch. And a lot of times you get caught up in the rhythm of BP and you're going, okay, I'm taking six swings this round. Um, you're just swinging at every pitch. But then when you do like a 2-0 round, um, you're making sure that you're getting your pitch and you're getting something that you can drive. And we're trying to hit home, when we do it, we try to hit yeah. home runs. We're just gonna say, hey, how many home runs can we hit this round? Yeah, and you hear, you hear big leaguers say that all the time. Like, what's your approach? I just try to hit a home run. Well, that they are actually <laughs> yeah. doing that, but they have the, they're doing it in their zone. They're not just trying to hit home runs on 17 inches of plate. They're doing it on a little, you know, four inch by four inch box yeah. that they're looking for that specific pitch. And you practice that enough and you focus hard enough, that the game becomes a lot easier. Yeah. And that's, that's why I try to tell kids, it's like you take a 17 inch plate right here, you take this plate and you shrink it to a third of the size. And then instead of from top of the knees to the letters, we go from halfway up the thigh down, to the yeah. belt, you know, that's, that would be very easy if a pitcher has to throw it yeah. in there, right? But realistically, pitchers miss there all the time. Yeah. So, um, so if you're already prepared to hit that pitch, I mean, your your odds of making solid contact, and it's all about damage. I yeah. mean, we go up there, and I'll be happy if I you know hit 300, but I'll be way happier if I hit 300 and I increase my doubles and my home runs because I had better pitch selection. Yeah. You know, like I could get lucky, I could slap my singles, but that's not me. Like I have more potential than that. Any hitter, you know, out there, you have your your ceiling, and your goal is to get the offseason and increase that ceiling. You know, you want to get better and better, but it comes down to pitch selection, yeah. and that's where you can maximize yourself as a player. And that stuff carries, you know, into scouts when people watch you, like. They'll say a lot. That kid's got a great, you know, approach at the plate. He's looking for the right stuff, and he's he's hammering fastballs all day. Yeah. So that stuff carries big. But um, I guess as far as pitch selection, is there anything else? Like um, one other thing too, is, is when you're talking about shrinking the zone, um, one phrase I hear a lot, and we say to each other um, when you're in certain counts, just put the ball in a box. Mm -hmm. And so it's something just to key in, just a reminder to say, hey, okay, where is my zone, and let's let's put this. 
this uh, imagine that ball coming in that zone or anything, if, if the pitch works anywhere outside of that zone, I'm not thinking about swinging. Mm -hmm. So I want to recognize as, as early as possible, is this pitch in my zone? If it is, I'm going to hit it higher. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Yep, yep. So zone up, you'll hear like zone the coaches up. Yeah, say zone stuff up. like that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, guys, I'm telling you, you put in a lot of work this offseason, you make your adjustments, you tie it in with having great pitch selection into your season, I promise you it'll take all that hard mechanic work and tie it into your game. Once you go off of that pitch selection or you don't really have a pitch selection in your bat, you could just go ahead and chalk that off season <laughs> off as a failure because yeah. you'll be most of your at bats will be taking defensive swings. And that's now it's about it's about being aggressive in your zone early in the count. And again, early in the count for us is anything under two strikes. There's no reason why you can't be aggressive underneath two strikes. Nope. So, um, but yeah, other than that, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you do have any questions, leave them in the comments below. I'll leave those links below as well, and uh, we'll have some more videos coming at you soon. Yep. Awesome.